Brownian motion and Einstein. How are they related? Well, it turns out that Einstein's analysis of Brownian motion is one of his least well-known but very important contribution to physics. Brownian motion is the random movement displayed by microscopic particles suspended in fluids. It was named after the botanist Robert Brown. In 1827, the botanist Robert Brown made observations of pollen seeds taken from a type of evening primrose called Clarkia pulchella, suspended in water under the microscope. What Brown saw surprised him. The tiny grains suspended in water appeared to make random zigzag motions. This motion never appeared to slow or stop. It was in constant motion. Further studies showed that Brownian motion could be observed not only with particles of organic substances, but also with chips of glass, particles of smoke, or even in fluid-filled vesicles in rocks from the Great Sphinx. Brown has shown that whatever it was, this movement was not biology, it was physics. However, at that point, he could not explain why this occurred. A better understanding of Brownian motion came later that century, when the kinetic theory of matter, proposed by scientists such as James Clerk Maxwell, Ludwig Boltzmann, and Rudolf Clausius, argued that all matter consists of constantly moving atoms or molecules. Therefore, their collisions are responsible for the movement of smoke or dust particles in the air, just as in Brownian motion. But it was Albert Einstein who gave a mathematical model for Brownian motion in 1905. By the way, on an interesting side note, did you know that Yoda's face, the all-knowing character from Star Wars, was partly based on Einstein's face? Well, according to Star Wars special effects artist Nick Maley, a picture of Einstein somehow ended up in the walls behind Yoda's sculpture, and Einstein's features were eventually incorporated into Yoda's face. Well, I guess I'll never see Yoda the same way anymore. Albert Einstein explained that the pollen grains were being moved by individual water molecules around them. The idea was, if tiny but visible particles were suspended in a liquid, the invisible atoms in the liquid would bombard the suspended particles and cause them to jiggle. Einstein explained this motion in detail, accurately predicting the irregular, random motions of the particles, which could be directly observed under a microscope. In 1908, Einstein had published a second paper on Brownian motion, providing even more details than his 1905 original paper, and suggesting a way to test his theory experimentally. Einstein's theory on Brownian motion offered experimentalists the possibility to prove that molecules exist, despite the fact that molecules themselves are too small to be seen directly. That same year, a French physicist named Jean-Baptiste Perrin conducted a series of experiments that confirmed Einstein's predictions. His work later earned him his own Nobel Prize in Physics in 1926. You might wonder why Einstein was interested in Brownian motion in the first place. Well, what Einstein wanted to do actually was to find facts that would guarantee the existence of an atom. And his paper, published in 1905 on the molecular mechanisms of Brownian motion, established the existence of atoms even though you cannot see them directly. Then he derived how big atoms should be based on how much the Brownian particles move. It's like estimating the size of a seal by looking at how much icebergs get jiggled by the seals. Diffusion can also be considered a macroscopic manifestation of Brownian motion on the microscopic level. Diffusion is a physical process in which a substance tends to spread steadily from regions of high concentration to regions of lower concentration. 
If you'd like to know more about Diffusion, please watch my previous video called Diffusion. I'll post the link below. Other examples of Brownian motion include diffusion of calcium through bones and movement of holes of electrical charge in semiconductors. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for watching.